Uh, welcome to the second screening in Life Fantastic, which is a little season of dance films we put together for International Dance Festival Birmingham. Uh, I'm Ian Francis from Flatpak Festival. Uh, Flatpak finished um, about six weeks ago, so you've missed it, I'm afraid, but it often happens in the year, along with lots of other places uh, every March and all over Birmingham. Um, but that's now made way for the dance festival, which kicked off on Wednesday, properly I believe, and is now happening all over the city. Uh, and the great thing about the dance festival is it gives us loads of dancers from all over the world who've got fascinating experiences and uh, skills, who as well as performing have uh, kind of picked some films for us. So we, we've uh, we polled various dancers involved in this year's dance festival for, for favourite movies and it turned out that Sean Parker <coughs> was actually in a movie not too long ago so he's picked that, uh, not purely out of vanity, but also because it's a great dance film and, uh, and I think some of his experiences making the film will probably be of interest to you, whether you're into films or dance. Um, so, please welcome Sean Parker. Just to, so you know the context, Sean's currently working on something called Spill. Uh, which is taking over playgrounds all over Birmingham and the West Midlands, and uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. But um, maybe you could tell us how you got involved in Moulin Rouge, Sean. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, well, I was I was living in Sydney at the time. We filmed Moulin Rouge at Fox Studios in Sydney. Um, it was a co-production, Fox uh, America and Fox Studios in Sydney, in Australia. Um, Oh, sorry. So I was basically, I danced for about 10 years in Australia and in Europe as in theatre, dance theatre. And then Moulin Rouge, Baz started to, to start working on Moulin Rouge and uh, the choreographer John O'Connell, who choreographed the work, I'd worked with a couple of times in the past. Um, so we already had a, a, a strong working rapport over that time and, and um, I actually bumped into him at the airport, he was on the way to LA to start meetings and everything and I was off on a tour, a theatre tour, with Australian Dance Theatre. And um, he just said, oh I'm about to do a movie and he talked about the dates the following year and because I'd worked with him before, um, I, he sort of said, I'm really interested in you being in it. So I sent through some footage and, and film clips, etc. of the dance that I'd done and um, so Baz invited me to go in the film. So it was quite an amazing process to be a part of. And in, in Australia, in Sydney, to have Baz Luhrmann doing a major musical extravaganza, you know, and working with such a creative mind, such as Baz Luhrmann and John O'Connell, um, it was just an awesome opportunity. So I took it up and we worked, I think we started August 1999, so that's quite a while ago now. And I, was, I think I was about 28, and then we did uh, three months of filming. Um, it was quite an extensive process. They built a, on Fox Studios, a, a big studio at the back. It was sort of like a huge shed which they laid with dance floor. So it was sort of our home for three months. So we would be in there working through all the choreography, the, the tango, the Like a Virgin scenes. Um, Nicole and Ewan turned up, who were the lead performers. And, um, you know, Nicole had danced as a, a kid. She did ballet. So, of course, um, um, John O'Connell was training her up again, doing ballet and yoga with her again. And then she would come in and we, we had sort of about a one month workshop period. Because it was really important for Baz that the dance movement of all the actors and the, the dancers themselves was very crystallised. So we created a number of scenes over a month. So it was sort of like a little holiday camp for dance and on the back lot there. Um, and then we crafted a lot of the scenes from there. And you'll see um, a lot of the Can Can Girl scenes as well. Um, the Hindi pop scene, which was the big Bollywood-influenced extravaganza at the end of the film. Um, so I think Baz Luhrmann as well, he's, he, he was very inspired by merging of forms. The classic Montmartre um, Can Can Girls in this sort of arena um, for the Can Can Girls, but he also is very influenced in modern pop culture and how you, the old meets the new in a way. In the forms, not only with the pop songs that he uses, but also the instrumentation that the composer worked with, and also, even stylistically, of course, the can-can girls were not dressed in the traditional can-can outfits. It was stylistically taken into another world. So I was inspired by this era, but it almost had a timeless sense 
with all these influences from different genres in a, in a sense carefully laid together. So it was a pretty exciting project to be a part of, I think. So you, you've, you've done 10 years on stage. What, what were the, the big, what, it was obviously a bit of a culture shock going from theatre to film. What were the big changes for a dancer to, to work on a movie? Yeah. That's a really good point, actually, because when you dance in theatre, it's very immediate. You rehearse eight hours a day in the studio, creating the choreography. You perform, there's an immediate, immediate rapport with the audience. You perform, you leave. So it's a very different process. With film, um, it's the time element. Theatrical time is very different to filmic time. And so when we're crafting um, different scenes, there'll be a, a one day, a three hour wait. So of course, within that three hour wait, you have to keep your bodies warm, keep your mind focused on the choreography because they might just say okay we're ready now and you have to be ready to film straight away so but i think a lot of the time on set there's so much to look at watching baz work the way that he worked with the cameras he was very uh, precise um, in the way that he filmed each of the scenes um, so that would be a very large difference is the, the element of time and the fact that you may have to do 13 takes of the tango in a row for example and that was one of the key scenes the tango scene which we did, um, also the Like a Virgin scene, which was sort of a, a, an old-fashioned Hollywood style, like almost like Hello Dolly, but um, actually done to Madonna's Like a Virgin in that scene. So there's lots of scenes like that that drew on old musicals, but also modern pop songs in a sense. So you, you, did, you did three months' worth of work on the film. Uh, is there anything in particular people should look out for while they're watching the movie in terms of the, the dance sequences? And, uh, and what's a good way of spotting you? <laughs> <laughs> I was 12 years younger and I was cleanly shaved, so good luck spotting me. Um, but I, the, I, we danced in um, the main scenes that I danced in the tango with Carolyn O'Connor, who was the lead um, um, tango dancer in that. So I worked a lot with her in the tango scenes, in the Like a Virgin scenes, I'm one of the dancing waiters. Um, and then, of course, all the can-can scenes with the men in the suits as well. So we played multiple roles. It was almost done like a musical, um, a stage musical, of course. Um, and then, of course, the Hindi scenes at the end with the massive Bollywood-inspired scenes as well. So wherever there's dance, the key, there were 16 of us. We were in, in every scene. Um, we were the Montmartre dancers. Um, and then, of course, we had guest artists coming in to play um, a variety of roles. In fact, there's actually a girl, she's a very good friend of mine, her name's Kiran Stamel, and she played the Petty Princess, and she's a short-statured performer. Um, and um, that's where I met her, actually, and become a very good friend since, and she's recently been on the new uh, work uh, Ricky Gervais did. Mm -hmm. um, she actually features in that, as well as, as a short-statured person. It's sort of political comedy. And she's very much like that. She's, she has a very strong um, element of satire in her life, and she's very sarcastic. So I think, and she's worked as a stand-up comedian as well, so she, she slotted very well recently with Ricky Gervais um, in that. So look out for her, she's, she's a very interesting performer because her whole life, you know, she was told you'll never have a career, you know, because you're short-statured. Um, and she just trained in tap dancing, contemporary dance. And it's amazing seeing someone of that height dance and she'd pull off backflips and everything. It was quite fun to have her on set, in a sense. So look out for her as well, yeah. Um, we haven't got time for questions, I'm afraid. We have to start the movie in a minute. But uh, maybe just before we sign off, you could tell people a little bit about Spill. Spill, yes. And, uh, and why they can find you over the next few weeks. Right, yeah, well, Spill, I'm choreographing um, a collaborative work called Spill in the International Dance Festival of Birmingham. Um, so look for it in the, um, in the programs. I've spent four weeks here in Birmingham working with UK dancers and we've created a 30 minute outdoor work. And we open next Thursday at St George's Park here, and then we tour it to 40 different parks around Birmingham and the West Midlands over the next eight weeks. And it's a family show, it's a show for the community. It's, uh, it's set in a kid's playground. One of the performers is a parkour artist, um, a couple of the others are break dancers, contemporary dancers. So I have four dancers, very highly physical show, they do quite incredible things, um, leaping, climbing, back flipping, launching themselves throughout all the different playground equipment. Um, so it's, a, it's actually a fantastic show for kids and it's, it's great for, for us to take the show to them where they play in their playground. Like already in the last couple of weeks, 
we've been rehearsing and the kids sort of see it and come running from everywhere and watch us rehearse. So that's been very nice to see. So you have, it's, it's you know, we obviously we worked the show that I was very interested in having the show that worked for adults so the parents can come and watch and the kids enjoy it as well. So there's some nice conceptual elements to the work spill. So if you have any children that are interested in dance and physical theatre, it could be quite a, a nice show to take them to see. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Um, and there's loads of other stuff, obviously. Uh, there's a big sort of Wings of Desire finale in the Victoria Square, which looks very interesting. They're going to be projecting onto the Town Hall, and Goldie's involved. And if you wanted to uh, prepare yourself for that, we're showing Wings of Desire the vendors film here uh, a few days beforehand from 35mm, which would be nice. And we've also got Pina here on Wednesday, I think, 1st of May. Tuesday. Tuesday, sorry, thank you, Dave. Uh, and that's selling well, and it's in 3D, and it'll be in here. My, my information is obviously completely unreliable. Uh, West Side Story is at Mac tomorrow, I know that for sure. Uh, so that's another good matinee movie. Um, but I will stop talking and let you watch the film now. Thanks ever so much for coming on. Cheers. Thank you so much.